Hello everybody, this is a short tutorial about Juno Pods. So when we go into Juno Pods, we do have to have our lockdown browser. I'm going to show you a little bit around here so that we're all familiar with it. So in Juno Pods, I have this example, sine of 120 degrees. So in that case, you it's a pretty simple problem. You just have to calculate what that sine of 120 degrees is. So in this problem here, I would go ahead and select the answer, which of course we all know, since 120 degrees is a 60 degree reference angle, the sine of 60 is root three over two, and it is in quadrant two, so the answer would be here. Moving on to the next question, sorry, let me go back to that last one. So notice I've selected that one, and I wanna point out that sometimes uh, you might not see the whole thing on your iPad, so if you go up to the corner here, you can request the desktop site. You can also change the size of this. But sometimes it'll go off your screen, so you have to be careful about how big you do it. I've kept mine on 85%. That seems to be very helpful. Requesting the desktop site will change the look of the, of the problem itself. So notice that it's the page that you're looking at is slightly different. I'm going to ask that everybody stay on the mobile website for now. And hopefully we won't have too many issues with that. Okay, the next type of question is where you write things in. So you'd be writing your answers. I want to point out that if you if you put your hand down on the screen, it does not have the the um, the iPad does not recognize that sense or it recognizes that as the pen now. So in this one, I like to put a, a washcloth or a thin towel or something underneath my wrist as I'm writing and then I just pull that down so notice I'm I'm actually writing on the if you hang on let me go to the bottom here if I select blue and then I start writing at the top I'm actually resting my hand on the iPad so it's no problem to do that some of you kind of write without touching down but um, that's something that you can work on just to get yourself familiar with it Okay, the question, and of course, if you want to go up and down, you can't go up and down here. You have to move it from the side of the pane. So just to keep that in mind, if you want to see that. Um, so I'm going to go to the top. It says, find the foci for the ellipse having vertices at 3, 0, and 13, 0. So keep in mind that uh, we've done this before. 3, 0 on the number line, if you were to draw this. Here's 3, 0 over here. Here's 13, 0. So halfway in between would be our center, and that would be at 8, 0. So that's important because it helps us to write the equation of our ellipse. It contains the point 10, comma, 4 root 21 over 5, and so we're really trying to find the C value, or in our case, find the B value, and then use the Pythagorean theorem. So working this out, we would end up with the following. Um, we already know that the length out to the vertex is going to be 5 units. That tells us that A is 5. And our center is at 8, and it's horizontal because the vertices are to the right and left. So I would write my equation this way. x minus 8 squared over 25 plus y squared, because there's a 0 there. And this is over b squared, because I don't know what that is. So I've got this information here. I'm going to let you think about that for a second. Now we're going to take the point 10, 4 root 21 over 5 and substitute that in for x and y. So substituting in the 10 for the x gives me 2, because 10 minus 8 is 2, squared over 25, plus when I square the 4 root 21 over 5, I end up with this. 16 times 21 over 25 b squared. Notice that the, tw the 25 goes into the denominator because that's the same as putting a 16 times 21 over 25 in the numerator. I'll let you think about that for just a second before I move on. Next step. And notice we're going to run out of space if we're not efficient with our space. I'm going to multiply through by 25b squared in this entire equation. Next step, we get 4b squared plus 16 times 21 is equal to 25b squared. Bringing the 4b squared to the other side, I get 16 
times 21, and notice I'm not actually multiplying these. I'm just gonna leave them alone because I end up with 21b squared. So b squared is 16. Now that I know that b squared is 16, if I were to put it back in there, I could figure out my answer, but I don't really need to. I'm looking for the foci. So I simply want to take 25 minus 16, which equals 9, and that tells me that c must have been 3. So my answer for the foci coming from the center is going to be 8 plus or minus 3 comma 0. Now keep something in mind in this this is not like notability. You don't have additional space to work with. So if you have to create more space for yourself, there's not a whole lot of good ways to do that. One of the ways you could do it is to take away portions of it like this, and now you'd have a little bit more space on the side over here. You could write some things over here. But you do have to be efficient with your space in the drawing pane. I'll try to make sure that the computation should be able to fit within there as I practice. And you can see that the thickness of your pen also is a little bit thick, so there's nothing we can do about that at this point. All right, so those are the two types of problems you're gonna see quite often. We'll do those in class starting this week.